boxing in a fight, think about it. Boxing another guy for money in front of millions of people, hoping you don't get knocked out and hoping you knock him is not natural. It's no. not normal. That's not human behavior. You know, that's animalistic. Yeah, how much, how much uh, of the result of the fight can you tell based on how someone's acting in the locker room? It's, it's, it's indicative. Uh, you know, you see, cause, because especially if you see a guy like for, for six weeks, He's Muhammad Ali. He's mm. telling you all the stuff he's going to do. And he's signing autographs and he's taking pictures and he's writing all over Instagram and how great he is, right? And then in the dressing room, he looks like he's going to the electric chair. Mm. And you say to yourself, you're not the same guy you were two weeks ago. You're dis two weeks ago, maybe you, you might do something. But tonight, I, don't, I think you've... That's why the dressing room, and I speak about the dressing room weight often right because people don't really if you've never done it oh man the, you, the you have to understand right yeah it's like no matter how brave you think you are right like I, and i always give this example you get two guys guys hit me i fight all the time i go nah you fight in the street you fight in a bar that's different yeah i, go, I don't care who you if i'm gonna and, I, and i'm not a bar guy, i don't go to bars but i'm saying a guy in a bar the guy bumps into him the guy's three inches taller than him 40 pounds heavier he bumps into him they get into it, they fight. They fight because they have to, because the adrenaline is high, it's the spur of the moment. Mm. So they go, yeah, I fight. I go, you fought because you had to. Mm. Now, how about if I stop you guys right there in the bar and I go, hey, I want you to go home for two days. I want you to think about what's gonna happen. Come back here in two days and then fight. You know who's coming back? Nobody, Nobody. they're not coming Nobody's back. Coming back. No, they're gonna, common sense is gonna overrule everything. Boxing in a fight, think about it. Boxing another guy for money in front of millions of people, hoping you don't get knocked out and hoping you knock him is not natural. It's no. not normal. That's not human behavior. You know, that's animalistic. Yeah. That's not for everybody. There's people who, like I say, people say, I fight my Tyson for a million dollars. I say, you wouldn't. No, you, you wouldn't. wouldn't. You, you think you would because you know you're not going to have to. I can tell you I'll fight Lennox Lewis, man, anytime. Oh, yeah, well, Lennox is in the room. He's coming out right now. Uh, yeah, um, uh, my stomach. <laughs> my yeah, stomach. Yeah, yeah. You know, you say it because you know you're not going to have to yeah. do it. You know, so they get in the ring. In the reality, you're not as tough as you thought you were. Yeah. But, I mean, all fighters have to work through that, right? Because, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I'm not fighting on these guys' levels at all. But um, the, the few times that I... That I Anyway, I remember being in the, in, in the dressing room and I can't move my legs. Yeah, I can't yeah, move yeah, my yeah. jaw. I can't talk properly. When when I was coming up as an amateur, I remember I remember the day. I remember exactly where I was sitting, and I remember who said it. I was in the dressing room, and I must have had a look on my face. I was trying to navigate this new feeling, right? And a kid named Patrick Ireland. He was much more experienced than I was at the time, and he came over to me and he goes, "The day of the fight, you ever?" You ever break your shoelace and you think that means you're gonna lose? And I went, yeah. He goes, everybody thinks that. He goes, everybody does that. What you're going through, he knew I was going through it. He could tell by my face. And he said, everybody goes through that. It's just a matter of hiding it. You're not hiding it yet. <laughs> you know? So all you gotta do is hide it. Yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta deal with it. You, you know, you can't be like, like, like you see people, Say you're going through a bad neighborhood, right? Everybody knows this is the worst neighborhood in the city. Some guys walk and they and they, they yeah, tense they, up. Yeah. Other guys just walk through like they've they've lived there their whole lives. Right. You got to be that guy. You gotta you gotta portray that to the people there, because if you show that meekness, you're getting mugged. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting mugged any minute. So it's it's all in the way you carry yourself, because. On the inside, everybody's dealing with Mike Tyson, of all people, the ultimate predator. He said, he's, you can look on YouTube, he talks about the same thing I'm saying. He said, man, I'm, I'm scared to death in this restaurant. Right. I can't believe it. I'm scared to death. But then I walk out, and all of a sudden I feel like a monster, yeah. you know, once I get there. Some people walk out and they still feel scared to death. I, I sure, yeah. yeah. I, I, my first fight, actually, um, I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, right, I was right, always right. a tough kid. Of course. And I puked right before the oh, fight. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Of course. Well, I, I don't want this to, you know, <laughs> to be over. Yeah, yeah. But I really appreciate your time. That was good, Thank man. Thank you so much for coming fun. on. It was fun. I really, really appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank I you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks yours. So Thank you.
I've completely forgot my outro, but it's okay. Um, that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope it was a good investment every time. Follow my man, uh, Iceman John Scully. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Subscribe to mine. Check out my Patreon. And peace.